Hello, good evening. So today I will be talking about the shortest play ever written and ever produced. Yes, I am talking about Breath, written by Samuel Beckett in 1969. This play has got only three paragraphs. Each paragraph has two sentences. So three twos are six, so six sentences in all. And uh, a note for direction is another six sentences. Totally in 12 sentences, this play gets over. And it takes only 35 seconds for the production. Isn't it interesting? Yes, I'm not kidding. I will be reading the entire script to you in some time. So why did he write such a brief play, like a short play? So there is an interesting story behind it. So Kenneth Tynan was a literary manager at the National Theatre in London and he was devising O Calcutta. And he was, uh, he knew Beckett very well and he requested Beckett and other two persons who were also, I mean, you know, writers to write, you know, something for, for him. So specifically he told Beckett to write a short play for an erotic review. So remember this word erotic. That evening itself, uh, like, you know, when uh, Beckett was having a cup of coffee in cafeteria with his uh, girlfriend, Ruby, uh, he wrote this play on a paper towel or you could say a tissue paper. And the very next day, he transcripted that same thing on a postcard, open postcard, and he posted it to Tynan. That was the story behind this. So let me read this story for you. Note each word and try to interpret and analyze. And then only you will be able to relate to what I'm going to discuss. So the story, actually it fits in only one, not even one page, 12 sentences with my mobile screen also. So I will be anyway holding it horizontally so that I could read it better. So let me just uh, read it for you. All right. The first word is certain. So, paragraph number one, faint light on stage, littered with miscellaneous rubbish, hold for about five seconds. Paragraph number two, faint brief cry and immediately inspiration and slow increase of light together reaching maximum together in about 10 seconds silence and hold for about five seconds. Paragraph number three, expiration and slow decrease of light together reaching minimum together light at, as in one in about 10 seconds and immediately cry as before. Silence and hold for about five seconds. Curtain. So, in these two words, curtain and curtain, that is the opening of the curtain and closing of the curtain, there are only 12 sentences and it takes 35 seconds. Now he specifies what, what uh, you know, like a note for direction, I would say, or what he wants the uh, directors to note how, how to go about it. So he clearly writes rubbish. What does it mean? So no verticals, all scattered and lying. Okay, note this point also. Then cry. Instant of recorded vagitus. So remember this word vagitus. Important that two cries be identical. One in the beginning of the play, one in the end of the play. Both the cries are to be identical. That's what he says. Switching on and off strictly synchronized with uh, synchronized light and breath when the cry is going on, on both the cases. Then breath. You need not stand there and make sound. He says it is an amplified recording, slowly, gradually increasing. So you just a little bit of amplify and recording. Then maximum light, not bright, he says. Again, there are specifications. Not bright means I can interpret in some way, you can interpret in some way. So he gives a, you know, kind of a systematic thing over there. If zero is dark and 10 is bright, light should move from about three to six and back. Now try to understand if we, uh, you know, if we say zero means completely dark, then you can, uh, audience cannot see anything, right? 
so he says it is somewhere at three means very faintly the objects are visible on the stage then gradually as the cry goes the light also increases as the cry is amplified so it will reach six means it will just make the things visible so creative thinking and then at the end again from 6 to 3 okay that was about the play now let us understand you know what when this play was written something really interesting happened this tynan i mean you know like uh, twisted the plot uh, not uh, exactly plot or something but he added something he altered the script i would use a proper word altered the script so he added naked bodies to the rubbish okay now what does this mean naked bodies means two women and or two men are not going to be thrown obviously it's going to be of a man and woman so that clearly suggested the work was about the physical union if the child has to take birth then there should be a you know union of a man and woman so this created a lot of controversy in 1969 and in those days uh, it it really became a very uh, topic of discussion packet was very furious not that he cared for using the word or anything but he was very upset with tynan for meddling with his uh, script you know with his original writing he even called him a liar and a cheat in public and uh, for altering the script and even thought of sending him a uh, legal notice and taking a legal action but there was a loophole in the script the script mentioned stage littered with miscellaneous rubbish miscellaneous rubbish is whatever i feel miscellaneous rubbish i will add to it so it is up to everyone so nothing is specified he didn't write that don't throw naked bodies or don't throw this particular thing or anything like it it didn't specify what kind of rubbish and also the second part was the very word vagitus was not an innocent or a simple word right it was more to it, it was an erotic word it was more to do with a woman than uh, you know the kid that is born or the baby that is born so then he left the idea he just said i just don't care i don't want to get into the mess and uh, let him do what he likes you know so he just uh, gave it up uh, the idea of legal note now this alter version was first included in kenneth tynan's uh, uh, review o calcutta at the eden theater in new york city on 16th june 1969 the second performance was at um, uh, no sorry sorry you the uk premiere was at the close theater club in glasgow and uh, in october 1969 this was the first performance of the text as written okay the second performance and the english premiere was at the benefit held at the oxford uh, playhouse on march 8 1970 the first accurate publication appeared in gambit in 1969 with the manuscript facsimile means without any alteration what originally was written only that was published anyway then the second the sound of an instant recorded uh, vagitus that, that's a birth cry followed by an amplified recording of somebody slowly inhaling and exhaling accompanied by increase and decrease of the intensity of light on the stage made everybody think in different directions everybody started thinking why he has so said like this why the light has to be amplified why there is a cry in the beginning why there is cry in the end and all that so there is then the second identical identical cry as i told just now the piece when the piece ends or when the i mean play ends there he uses the word expiration now we all know when we use the word expiration though technically exhalation and expiration are the same and Empty, emptying your lungs out or breathing out but we call it as inhalation and exhalation when we call expiration when we finally breathe out and there is nothing to again go back to like you know inhale so that also is very important we will just see it in some time why it is uh, he he must have written that then there are no people on the stage actually and uh, like you know but beckett states that the it has to be littered with miscellaneous rubbish that is why no verticals all to be scattered and lying that's how he took the advantage who uh, i mean uh, his friend like uh, tynan so beckett may, may have meant this play to stand as an ironic comment on o calcutta that is also possible but 
he he's i mean his own person who was known to him that literary manager he tampered with the text and added a stage direction to include whatever we discussed it just now when the book of o calcutta was published worse than this why i'm again referring to that is when the book of uh, o calcutta was published uh, by guru press not only was this unauthorized edition added that is inclusion of naked bodies but beckett's name was written uh, he was the only author whose name was written attached to the piece and even on the cover page of the article there was this uh, you know rubbish scattered along with the nude bodies so they broke the promise that you know he also must have misbehaved and the other guy also tanner also got angry and then he showed after all he was into media so yeah it was supposed to be anonymous but they they just divulged only his name and others name nowhere it surfaced and on the top of that the photograph on the page that faced beckett script showed the naked body so again this version was filmed later and uh, the filmed version was directed by artist damien hurst and uh, on, uh, when he made this uh, part of the beckett on film project the debris features hospital and medical waste this was his added thing and also he used cigarette butts shaped in the form of a swastik so when hurst was asked like he said it is not an easy thing i had to read and reread these six sentences reread this entire play try to understand while preparing for the shoot i keep kept on reading the step over and again over and again like you know why what can, what could i add over here so they came up with this medical waste and also he said you know his direction hold for about 5 seconds he said that is quite a naughty statement he said he realized that he had a massive uh, beckett has a massive sense of humor now how i look at this play now now see everything is fine the first like we understood but why there is a cry again at the end so it could be see actually it clearly indicates that on the stage when the rubbish is littered or whatever there is a uh, uh, i mean there is a uh, cry like you know birth of a baby the birth takes place over there and intensity so from the darkness to the light means that is where when the soul takes birth on this earth and then you are into the world so that could be one indication and uh, littered waste as people have tempered and all that i have explained how uh, the idea came over there for them like what ideas uh, they got and then what happens is like at the end again there is a cry again there is expiration now first inhalation when he says na very slowly deeply inhale and then very deeply exhale see those who uh, know about this uh, like you know uh, natural birthing process you will relate to it what happens is uh, nowadays to neither doctors have patients nor the women have patients everybody goes for c section or t section or whatever or at least sedated delivery but if you go for a natural delivery the doctors always tell you breathe in and hold your breath and then push the baby then the baby can be pushed out okay so could be that image came to me when i read it i am telling my this thing i am not saying that somebody has written it or i haven't read it anywhere on the google i am just telling my interpretation so that's why what i uh, you know understood so there is the breath taking in the breath very slowly breathing in and then pushing it that could be the process of birthing that took place now last me when he says this is understandable okay when last me when again he says that there is again a cry of the baby and that time it is expiration so does he want to say that when you expire you are actually vacating and you are vacating that place for somebody else to be born because i mean you know he might not have believed in rebirth we are all hindus we believe in rebirth so that also could be one of the reason or taking birth was uh, entering into the light and going back to you know like uh, going away from the earth is darkness that is why he must have used that light ka concept and secondly like as i told you i am hindu we believe in rebirth so what i feel is when the soul expires okay there is already another body waiting for you to take birth that's what we all believe right 
so like even in bhagavad gita krishna says when your whole body gets as old as a tattered cloth or something when it is not able to hold your soul the body our oh, soul sheds soul is actually a not right word i would like to use the word atma so atma actually sheds that cloak sheds that uh, old jirna vasanani he calls in sanskrit jirna vasanani means tattered and ruined clothes so the body sh- uh, the atma sheds that and enters into the new body so does he wants to indicate this because see again it is all all these plays and everything these are up to our imagination our understanding this is how i understood the play so hope you like this interpretation of mine and uh, explanation so if you like the video please like share and subscribe thank you so much for watching watching thank you